Now, human growth hormone uh, is what I call the youth hormone, uh, and this is involved in recovery and uh, tissue regeneration and cell repair. Uh, it also helps you increase your fat metabolism, and basically, if you have higher levels of HGH in your body, you're going to look younger and feel younger and be leaner. Uh, now, there are certain types of exercise that will help stimulate that. Uh, one is, a, again, high-intensity interval training. Uh, has been shown to those short, intense bursts of exercise have a positive effect on, on your growth hormone production. Um, mm -hmm. Intense strength training exercises, again, with the right exercise selection, big compound multi-joint movements, training with the uh, correct intensity. Um, and they usually show if you keep the rest periods down, um, that has a greater effect. Now, obviously, that's dependent on your goals. Um, and then getting better sleep. So your growth hormone levels are the highest when you have an empty stomach, typically. So when you're sleeping during periods of deep sleep, you have higher levels of growth hormone. And that's going to tie us into the next topic, which is intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting is one of the uh, techniques that relates to uh, strong to growth hormone as well. Um, now, I started using intermittent fasting a little over a year ago and I experimented with different kinds of it, different forms. So uh, intermittent fasting is basically extended the periods of time that you have an empty stomach. So just like your growth hormone levels are high during sleep, when you're in deep sleep, mostly because you have an empty stomach, unless you're one of those uh, late night bingers, um, intermittent fasting basically involves extending that period of time that you, you have an empty stomach. So uh, a number of different forms of intermittent fasting that I've tried involve not eating breakfast and waiting until about midday before you consume your first meal and even okay. even better post exercise okay. so you're you're basically reaping even greater benefits that you have during sleep for anabolic hormone production and recovery and you're extending that for several hours okay. now a lot of people because this go and, and I was very skeptical with of this initially as well because I was always preaching several smaller meals a day, eat every three hours, make sure you keep a positive nitrogen balance. Right. Uh, and I basically, uh, this flipped that on its head and said it doesn't matter how often you eat um, and you're not going to go into, uh, you know, you're not going to become catabolic if you uh, miss a meal. Um, and basically... Uh, discuss a lot, a lot of the intermittent fasting discusses the benefits of having an empty stomach. Typically, the benefits of intermittent fasting are greater when you extend it past the typical 10 to 12 hour period that we have over sleep. Um, you know, if you're not eating right before sleep, you're typically fasting for at least 10 to 12 hours. But to get the benefits, you want to have at least a 16 to 24 hour period of fasting. Uh, and you can do this one or more times per week. Um, I usually, and most people that I've talked to are doing it two or three times a week, uh, some form of intermittent fasting. Um, now, they say that even though it's 20 to 24 hours where you really start to see some of these benefits, I'm going to show you in a second here. Uh, okay. If you're active and you're exercising, you can get those benefits in under 16 to 20 hours. Um, so I guess it's because of the uh, effect on your metabolism and on your growth hormone levels when you're active or when you're performing strength training and high-intensity interval training, you don't need to have as long of a fast to reap these benefits here. Now, some of the okay. benefits that studies have shown from intermittent fasting include uh, reducing your cholesterol, blood pressure, inflammation, and oxidative stress. So basically, that, that really, to me, says it slows down uh, cellular aging. So it can help you control the slow down the aging process and, and, and it also has benefits on growth hormone release which again helps to control or, or uh, slow the aging process. Mm -hmm. Increased cellular repair, increased fat metabolism, increased metabolism, um, all things that we want to, uh, to have if we're looking at body composition. Uh, improved appetite control, uh, controls your blood sugar, controls insulin uh, and improves your heart function. Um, now, if people who are watching this want to write this down, I put a blog post. I put it in tinyurl so it's easier for people to follow. So it's tinyurl.com, if number two, get lean. Uh, and that's a blog post where I include a lot more detailed information and links to different resources on intermittent fasting if people want to okay. check it out. So those are some pretty cool benefits 
of uh, of intermittent fasting. Now, they the one thing to note on that is that a lot of the studies were done on animals again. So there are a huge number of anecdotal, stu uh, you know. Uh, reports on the benefits of, of intermittent fasting, but you have to experiment it for yourself. So some considerations I recommend before using it is uh, decide if it's for you. I mean, even though there are a ton of benefits, it isn't for everyone. And if you've got a lot of other stuff going on in your life, or if it doesn't fit with your work schedule, your sleep schedule, um, you know, or if you just try it and you, you feel like crap, then obviously, you know, it's not benefiting you. So just don't do it. Um, Start slowly and keep it simple. Uh, a lot of people will try to overanalyze it and say, okay, if I you know, fast this day, this time, and when should I start up, stop and start eating? Uh, you got to focus on the big picture, so don't get all caught up in the details. I mean, the basics of it are sometimes you're eating, sometimes you're not, and that's basically sums it up. Um, you now you want to observe your, your experiences along the way. Give it time. It takes a few weeks before you start to get into uh, uh, the benefits of it and before your body gets used to it. But during this, the few weeks you're trying it, really observe how's my sleep, how's my appetite, how's my body composition, my energy. Um, do you do, do you uh, suggest uh, journaling? That write uh, it down. Well, I I suggest journaling for for any fitness goal, like uh, just like I'm sure Matt does for his uh, training. You know, you write down the the sets, reps, and weight you used uh, on each workout. Um, mm -hmm. That's the same with nutrition, especially if you have a body comp goal. Um, I mean, I use a free resource uh, called MyFitnessPal.com um, that just for tracking uh, macronutrients and calories. But there's FitDay.com, DailyBurn.com, and then as far as journaling, is your, your your how you felt and what time you ate and all of that stuff. Yeah, definitely. If you can keep a paper journal or or uh, or on your uh, mobile device, that definitely helps because you can go back and track and look at. Uh, at your results along the way. And like okay. I said, be patient. It takes a little while for you to start to see the changes. I mean, it sucked the first day or two that I did intermittent fasting. I was hungry and it felt like, it felt brutal. But uh, I mean, now, now I do it, I feel, uh, it feels great. Like I have more energy, um, definitely helped with body composition. Um, and, I, and I had great workouts on uh, intermittent fasting days. I mean, it was weird. But uh, mm -hmm. So, but definitely, I mean, suggest to me, my body was getting really efficient at using fat as a fuel source. I was having a positive hormone balance and uh, definitely some positive changes going on. Um, now, that leads into exercise, uh, but during your intermittent fast, you don't want to overdo it. Usually, a, a short, intense uh, inter interval training workout would really benefit you because that can increase the amount of uh, growth hormone that is produced. So in, hit training. Uh, high intensity interval training has already a benefit to uh, growth hormone production, as does intermittent fasting. And combined, it has a uh, uh, even even higher benefit. Now, if if uh, can you see? Can you read this? Yeah, uh, I can. Okay. Now, I'm sure if anyone's watching the video after, they can just pause it here. These are some books uh, that are great resources on different types of intermittent fasting um, diets. Now, I don't really like to call intermittent fasting a diet. I look at it more as a, an eating schedule. So it's it's basically you're getting the same amount of macronutrients and calories uh, that you would if you're eating all day long. It's just that you on the days you're using intermittent fasting, you have a shorter window of time to eat it within. Um, but uh, anyway, these call it diet. So the fast diet, there's the warrior diet, uh, the five two diet book, the eight hour diet, and the eat stop eat. Um, so those are great uh, um, books to Google and search, and again, they're listed on my blog. And the form of intermittent fasting that I've used before was um, the eight-hour eating window with a 16-hour fast. And so basically, I got lean by doing the opposite of what most people recommend. I I, I got lean by skipping breakfast, and uh, basically, I would eat uh, about 8 o'clock in the evening, my last meal, and then I would have an empty stomach straight through and straight through the morning until about noon or 1 o'clock the next day, mm -hmm. uh, at which point I would try to get in, if it would fit my schedule, try to get in, a, get in a, an interval training workout and then have my, my first meal of the day around noon or 1. And um, that, and then, then from noon to one until about eight o'clock at night. That night again, I would have 
an eight-hour window to get my meals in. So usually I was eating three larger meals instead of the typical six smaller meals recommended. Now keep in mind, I do this a couple of days a week, two, three days a week. The rest of the time I'm eating normally, uh, like a normal schedule for breakfast and, and straight through my meals. During the, and I actually prefer, even though a lot of the research now shows you don't have to break your meals up into five or six meals a day or, you know, seven or eight, you can eat three square meals a day if you're getting the, the nutrients you need, the calories you need, um, and your energy is fine. That th there's no problem with that. Some people, okay. some people may find that they, their blood sugar levels are more stable mm -hmm. if they eat if they eat more often. I prefer to eat more often. So typically, when I'm not doing intermittent fasting, I do eat five or six times a day. But mm -hmm. the take-home point is. Keep it simple. Like you don't have to cram in your meals. It's not you're not going to become catabolic when you you know you miss a meal. If if you get the nutrients you need in, you're set. That's why I recommend journaling with like a free journal like my Fitness Pal. Before someone gets into looking at intermittent fasting as an option for probably the majority of people would try that. It's probably for fat loss. Um, it would I would recommend that they get the basics down first. Like right look at the types of foods they're eating, uh, make sure that they have their macronutrients and their calories around where they should be, like they're eating enough protein, you know, the, uh, healthy carbohydrates, they're getting their micronutrients in, they're getting healthy fats in their diet, their, their calories are where they, they should be for their uh, height, weight, age, sex, and activity level, um, and, and get that down first.